this seems yeah. like a stupid rule because if the best gymnasts in the world aren't ready to compete until a September at verification camp, then you let them go to be healthy and go to verification camp. I understand that they don't want everybody to do what happened back in the Caroli days of you just petition to everything and you never have to compete. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. But if you have a legitimate reason, like your kidneys aren't working, then you should be able to show up when you can show up and compete there, right? Especially if you've proven yourself to be a super consistent athlete. Now, Simone was really smart because she gave herself insurance by going to camp. Remember, the show is PG-13, so you might hear a naughty word or two. Norbert is on the road. They will have a conference booth at Region 5 and 6, San Jose Elite Nationals, and GAT. Stop by and say hello, mention Jim Castic, and get an additional savings on their already 10% off show-only discount. Who doesn't want a discount on top of a discount? Of course, you can find more at their website at norberts.net. This week, history will be made. 55 combined Olympic world medals on the women's roster. Two all-around Olympic champions set to compete together at US Classic. This hasn't happened in 57 years. But returning Olympic champ Suni Lee is still coming back from her kidney issues. What if she can't compete? Does she have to compete this year at Classic to make the world team. We have the definitive answer for you. This is episode 31, it's July 31st, and welcome to the number one gymnastics podcast in the galaxy. I'm Jessica, and I'm here with Spencer from the Balance Beam Situation. Spencer, you have an important announcement. So important, the most important. We are doing a live show at Nationals in San Jose with two very special guests, Amy Borman, and Christy Phillips tickets are on sale now for both in-person and virtual tickets. So if you, once again, if you can't make it in person or are just scared of people and don't want to, I completely understand, you can buy a virtual ticket. But per the preferred seating is already almost sold out. So you have to act now. This limited time offer is only valid for a couple more seats because there aren't very many left. So it's going to be at the San Jose Improv on Saturday, August 26th at noon Pacific. Be sure to get there early and club members can check their emails and get the very special discount code, which expires on mid at midnight on August 5th, the discount code. So also, once again, act now. And of course, if you can't make it or watch live, you bought a virtual ticket, a replay will be available for two weeks after the show. So, you know, time zones are weird. If you can't make it right away, if you have your virtual ticket, you can watch up to two weeks afterward. And this week, we're about to do our U.S. Classic preview. And this week, we have three podcasts coming to you from U.S. Classic. So starting on Friday after women's podium training, and then two on Saturday after each of the women's senior sessions. So the full schedule and times are on in the show notes or on the website. Um, but after those sessions end, a little while after, after do media, then we will um, get on live and chat about all the stuff. So make sure you're a Club Gym Nerd member so you can listen to the full discussion. Three extra podcasts this week. So no behind the scenes this week. All because you get three instead of one. All right. U.S. Classic. Let's talk about what's happening. Yes. So, first things first, vital information. Two senior sessions this Saturday, 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. Central Time, because that's local time for the meet. So, session one. Session two is the headliners, I guess. That's well, That's kind of harsh, but that's kind of, they put all the world and Olympic medalists from the U.S. in session two, and then they were like, Everyone else in session one, but we do have some good ones. We got Melanie in session one, Joss Robertson in session one. It's going to be a good time. We'll do podcasts after each one. The field is big, Jessica. It's a big group in the senior field and accomplished 55 Olympic and world medals on the women's senior roster. It was actually 58, but then Shailise withdrew. So now it's a paltry 55, just 55 medals. I'm not sure if that's ever happened before. Do we think that's ever happened before? No, that has definitely not happened before. I'm just going to say right now. I was like, <laughs> categorically. Because, I was like, right. maybe Romain, like when Gojian and Aminar were competing together in Romania, maybe. Oh, maybe. But maybe, it's a yeah. lot. But not. 
here. 50, 55 is, is oh, not in the, U, oh, in the U.S. Can not you a match? No. <laughs> Never. Uh, yeah, 55 is a lot. Now, I will say, majority of those 55 are coming from exactly one person. But not all of them. But that one person, ever heard of her, Simone Biles, is competing at this week's U.S. Classic. This will be her first competition since the Tokyo Beam Final. So that was August 3rd, 2021. So we're ex- basically exactly two years on from the last time we saw Simone compete at a meet. Extremely exciting, because, you know, first of all, it's Simone. What are you, what are you ex- most excited about, Jessica? I'm most excited to see what Simone is working on now, if she's doing anything new that we haven't seen, how she's feeling about the Yurchenko Double Pike, because we know that she did it mm. at um, at uh, verification camp. camp she verified yeah. it. Um, so we know that it's the, I'm just excited to see like how much higher it is now. Like, is it the height of a building? <laughs> is it like... It this is some like- unrealistic expectations. Like, Simone, <laughs> I expect your Yurchenko Double Pike to be seven stories higher than it was before. <laughs> get um, over that empire state building yeah exactly that's what i wanted to be yeah. like um yeah. yeah and also she has a new floor routine so i'm excited to see what that'll be like will mm. it be different from kind of what she's done before is it something totally new or is she like you know i've got this floor thing down i know it works with me um is she gonna add any like married lady choreography because she's really into being married oh, no. um <laughs> i'm just saying that could be a thing is she gonna have a secret like you know sign for her husband in there it seems like the kind of thing that you know she would do um yeah so and i'm I'm interested to see if she's going to do all around or not. Um, mm. Yeah. And what she'll yeah, her say track, if it's interesting. she talks to the media. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, it's interesting because we kind of associate classic with like the very top athletes are like, I'll do an event. I'll do one or two. Like, it's just classic. I'm going to save it for nationals. But Simone's track record is usually she does the all around at classic. Like she did it in 2018, 2019, 2021. Um, and she did the all around at camp. So... I'm like, yeah, I kind of think she will do the all around. She doesn't have to. She could show up and just like, you know, wave to the crowd and do a skill. And we would be like, oh, my God, I'd pay a million dollars a ticket. It's Simone. But, you know, I think I think we might see the all around from her. I'm actually just looking forward to seeing most of all, like, I'm hoping to see the return of like funny, honest Simone when she's at her best. Yes. Like when she's relaxed. Like we learned that very early on with Simone. Where it was like changing the USAG culture, even in those like first years as a senior, where it was like, no, Simone needs to be like laughing and happy and cheering for her teammates in order to be at her best, not like regimented military, you you know, the culture of USAG. I want to see like that Simone coming back, like 2019 Nationals when she competed on bars and then immediately went down to Jordan (laughs) Childs and was like, that routine was a piece of shit. Like that's the, like the real Simone. Like, yes. You know, self defacing or self effacing, funny, kind of, you know, sarcastic. Like that Simone is when she's her best Simone. So I'm hoping yeah. that's what we see. Yes, the gives no shits Simone, which is <laughs> like, I feel like she's in her gives no shits era. This is what it is. Like she was real, and now she's like, I've done it all. This is just a bonus round, and we'll see how it goes. Like I have everything I need. I'm happy. We'll see. That's what I want. So the thing we should talk about the twisties, even though I'm already anticipating that like asking Simone about the twisties is going to be the new Carrie, how's your ankle? Where it would be like three years later and people would be like, Carrie Strug, how's your ankle? And she's like, I mean, it's been three years, so like, it's fine. But also, is this like a major talking point at this point for her current competitions? Like, would it affect her? What are your thoughts about that? I think because... Uh, Simone has agency and B has a great agent. She will probably answer this question once and then she will (laughs) tell people. Yeah. Like, and then she will tell people or her agent will tell people like she is not answering any questions about this. She told you once and bringing it back up over and over and over is an additional trauma. So we're not going to re-traumatize. So here's your one shot and your one quote. She did say on her Instagram that she does lots of therapy uh, quote, I go once a week for almost two hours. I have had so much trauma. So being able to work on some of the traumas and work on healing is a blessing. And like, that is the great thing. Like she's like on it. And she talked about how like her physical therapy and therapy are an extra rotation in her gymnastics training mm-hmm. as they should be. So 
I'm, yeah, I think she will have it managed very well, how she's going to deal with that question. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, she'll be very prepared. And I think it's, like, honestly, one of the best things about coming back, like, a year before the Olympics. She's like, get that stuff out of the way, as much as, like, getting back into competition mode. Um, But speaking of competition mode, something I don't think we really talked about before is that Simone's total D score at camp this month was exactly the same as her D score from Olympic qualification. Like, there's no, there's no let off, there's been no ramping up. Like, that's the same, it's the same difficulty. And there are code changes, so some things have gone down. She did the Yurchenko double pike, so that's going up. But it's like, it's still right there. And it was over a point more than what Andrade's difficulty in the all-around final at Worlds was to win the all-around. Yep. Which was at 23-9. Simone's in the 25s, based on what she showed at camp. So... You know, the difficulty's there, I guess. <laughs> She's ready. She seems Simone ready. Simone doesn't do any half-ass returns. I know, so like, she I'm really doesn't. She's water. like, I'm going to do the all-around. <laughs> she doesn't do that nonsense. She's like, if I come back, I'm going to win everything. There's nothing else. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, oh, also, yesterday, she said on her Instagram that um, she's twisting just fine. So, yeah. Question Although twisties, twisties are the I twisty would... thing could also be a flippy thing. But it's yeah. the nickname. I right. would... Um love simone to just walk in to like do the like media scrum after podium training and be like i'm first of all item one i'm twisting just fine item two what are your questions <laughs> like, <laughs> one out of the way I'm, it's fine shut up now ask me something fun ask me about my honeymoon do you want to talk about that <laughs> um i just want to talk a little bit about simone's longevity and resilience mm-hmm. and I so the first thing is that Simone's the first Olympic all around champion since Latinina, who competed five months pregnant, by the way. So Latinina was in the 1960s to continue to compete after an Olympics where she didn't win the all around. So there are people mm-hmm. who came back, you know, they went to, they right. won the all around, they competed again, but they yeah. never came like back Nadia after they didn't win. W- Nadia, won exactly. 76, competed 80, and then it's like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. Yep. Gabby Douglas came back for a second Olympics 2016 and then has not come back. So if Gabby competes again now, she will right. also same, be in this same category yeah. mm-hmm. of someone to come back after not winning all around. So I think, you know, she's showing that your career can have ups and downs and you can still continue and that something not exactly going your way doesn't mean it's all over. And when we think about all the things that Simone has accomplished in her career. So it's been 10 years since her first all around mm. title, which was also in Belgium. Yes, she won Double in digits. Antwerp. She competed with Michaela Maroney. Remember when she tackled Maroney like uh, a little armadillo? Um, I Yes, I, it's crazy that they competed together, right? So her lifelong coach moved on to something new. Her parents built a gym, which Many gymnast careers don't last after their parents build them a gym. Um, she took down a monster and USAG's leadership. She testified in front of Congress. She switched to new coaches. She went to two Olympics. Uh, she invented 700 skills. Uh, she overcame the twisties. She had her own tour. She got married. She's still healthy enough to continue at the elite level and has the will to continue at the elite level. Like I think this is really the thing. The health part, both mentally and physically, like so many elite athletes, especially in the U.S. system, are like, I don't, that's enough. I'm done with this. I just Mm -hmm. can't. They try again, but they just can't. So the fact that she's been healthy enough for this many Olympic cycles is really amazing. And I think we have to recognize that uh, no matter what happens, which obviously she's going to win everything, but even if she doesn't. It's amazing what she's accomplished and how far she's come and just showing that longevity. And this is why I hope all these gymnasts in this era stop calling themselves grandmas because I'm like, no, you're still winning. Like, stop calling yourself <laughs> that. But it's fine. They Grandmas can win, whatever Jessica. they want. I know. They can. <laughs> it's fine. Do whatever you want. But I'm just like, no, call yourself like, I'm the hotness. I'm still winning. Grandmas can be hot, too. I'm not nothing about grandmas. Oh, don't ask oh, me. Oh, okay. no. Keep digging, Jessica. Keep digging. <laughs> Club Gym Nerd. Get discounts and first dibs on live show tickets and extra podcasts every week. Athlete dossiers, code guides, commission your own segments of the show. It also makes a great gift. Check it out at gymcastic.com at the Join the Club tab. 
So on the topic of just competing at this meet before we project any accomplishments forward, which of course we want to do because it's like she's going to win this medal. She, they're going to win these medals. With Simone Biles and Suni Lee competing together at Classic, that alone has never happened before in one country. Two Olympic all-around champions both coming back to compete together after they've won is at this Classic is history making. Like the last time two Olympic all-around champions competed at the same meet together was 1966 Worlds, 57 years ago, in a very different era, very different gymnastics, very different expectations, um, and equipment, very unfair equipment. Co Horrible con equipment. Mostly concrete. <laughs> All concrete. Everything, everything was made out of spikes and concrete, as we know, in the 50s and 60s, just like the uneven bars were just like barbed wire. So, you know, wire. a different time. Yeah, just gra grab that barbed wire. What are you, what's wrong? Um, so it's, a, it's a huge deal that this is even happening once, let alone thinking about nationals, worlds, next year, like again and again and again. Just one meet has never happened before. I'm so excited. I mean, it's going to be the time where they march out and they've both competed and then it, we can officially say history has been made. And like... Confetti yeah. for some fall from the ceiling. There should be sure, should stop the sure. meat. Then everyone should get giant salad bowls. Oh, uh -huh. it'd be amazing. Okay. <laughs> and I know if confetti fell wife. from the ceiling during the meet, you would have no problems with it. You would be like, <laughs> this just, is fine and not a distraction. We need a, we need a giant vacuum. It should just fall on the audience, not on the gymnast. Because you know how confetti mm. falls exactly where you want it to. Easily controllable. Yeah. Right. And definitely exactly. fun to pick up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at least some lasery things. That's what I would like. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's discuss the current reigning Olympic champion who did college after she won, Sunisa Lee, mm -hmm. the pride of Minnesota. It's officially Sunisa Lee D Day uh, sometime or Sli Sunisa Lee Month or something in Minnesota or the mayor. It's a town. I don't know. They <laughs> named something Lee after her. Millennium, really. <laughs> Just name the whole thing. There's no need to have days named after anyone else. That is the way to do it. So. Thoughts on SUNY? Because this is maybe the big story. I mean, Simone is Simone is Simone. But I think the most pressing performance at U.S. Classic is going to come from SUNY Lee. Because the, what we've been talking about, and honestly been kind of confused by in the last couple of weeks, is whether SUNY absolutely has to compete at Classic in order to kind of continue on the process to compete at nationals, world selection camp, maybe world championships, we're like, it's SUNY though, right? So she shouldn't have to do anything. But USAG's rules uh, say that, you know, you have to have competed a couple of events at Classic, or you've been to a camp, or all of these things in order in the calendar year in order to petition to nationals if you don't, you know, compete all four events at Classic. Um, and SUNY hasn't done that. So we reached out to USAG, and by we, I obviously mean Jessica. Can you imagine? I didn't reach out to anyone. Um, <laughs> this is just, when I say we, I mean Jessica. Um, it's the and so Royal USAG, we. it's the Royal We, um, kind of trying to find out the situation about SUNY, but just all of the the qualification procedure. So USAG said any athlete who hasn't already qualified for championships through scores or being part of the world championships team may submit a petition to qualify to championships in order to submit a petition. An athlete must meet the two or three event scoring standard listed in the selection procedures at the core hydration classic. The core hydration classic is the U S classic. <laughs> So but you, now we're hydrated. It, before it was secret. Now it's just hydrated. You have to compete at Classic. So yeah, I read that to say Sudi has to compete in at Classic and get a two event, at least a two event qualifying score in order to continue through the process petitioning to nationals. And I think like we are we I reached out because I was like, all right, what if Gabby wants to compete this year? How would that be an option mm -hmm. for her? Or Suni, right. who's been talking about, you know, she said um, in relation to like, how's it feel going back to competing on our Instagram? She said, I'm definitely a little bit nervous. Past couple of months have been a lot, all caps, this on her Instagram, still in and out of the gym due to my kidneys, but so excited to get back out there. So 
we are not sure. You know, she said, you know, is she planning on doing all around this quad? And she has said, not sure, because, you know, she's not, her kidneys have still been an issue. So she's taking it day by day, but like she has to do this. There's no other option. Like they've made it clear you can't just petition to camp. Uh, you can petition to championships, but you can't petition to verification camp. And even if you want to well, petition to championships, but you, if they say you right. have to have the scoring standard in order for that petition to be accepted. Right. And, and you, so you can't just be like, well, I only want to compete to make the team. So I'm going to skip all this and just go petition to the world team trial verification camp. Uh, and that seems like a stupid rule to me. Because you want yeah. the best. Oh, yeah. oh well, definitely. <laughs> right, right. Let's move on to that part. This seems yeah. like a stupid rule. Because if the best gymnasts in the world, or the two best gymnasts in the world, um, aren't ready to compete until a September at verification camp, then you let them go to be healthy and go to verification camp. I understand that they don't want everybody to do what happened back in the Caroli days of you just petition to everything and you never have to compete. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. but. If you have a legitimate reason, like your kidneys aren't working, then you should be able to show up when you can show up and compete there, right? Especially if you've proven yourself to be a super consistent athlete. Now, Simone was really smart because she gave herself insurance by going to camp. And right. She was also healthy enough to do that. Right. Exactly. Like, I'm sure if Suni were like, everything's going great, she would be fine. But, you right. know, circumstances change by athletes. But this also means that Gabby Douglas can't compete this year. According to yeah, these rules. Yeah, that's my rating of it, too. Yeah. You're not Because you would also have to petition. I mean, you, there are also petition rules pertaining to a world selection camp. Like, the selection committee can invite you, but you have to... Inv they can invite petition. you to petition. But you have to petition. Right. So, yeah. I mean, and getting on to the nitty-gritty of this qualifying standard. So, that would mean SUNY would have to compete... And get the two event qualifying score, at least at Classic, which is a 26.4, so an average of 13.2 on two events. Now, normal SUNY, everyday SUNY, that's nothing. Like, for perspective, the last time SUNY competed elite at a U.S. meet, Olympic trials, her bars and beam two event score was 29.633, compared to the 26.4 you have to, get, it's way over. Different quad or different code, you know, different quad, different code, but not that different. Um, so, you know, normal SUNY is way over that marker. But as she said, she hasn't been able to train normally, fully, all the events, what she would want to do. And a 13 2 average, like that's also a hit score on an event like Bean. If you're struggling, things start to get dicey. And then we'd be in the same, in the insane situation where <laughs> SUNY would be like, ineligible because she didn't get a two event score at Classic, which would be ridiculous. Right. Please break that rule if necessary. Like, I'm, I mean, draft yeah, how time. fast? Me saying how... break a rule, but like, please break that rule. It's not good, but, you know, better break it. <laughs> I mean, we talked about how the International Elite Committee just changed the rules uh like at the very end of the year this last month and we're like oh we want more people to qualify to championships so we're changing the rules here's a new score that makes it much easier yeah, and all these people retroactively lowered, they lowered the all-around score to 50 right, by half a point 50.5 right. instead of 51 in the all-around for seniors so if you can change it, the rules almost at the end of the qualifying uh, system time, yeah. then change the rules. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, like, if you're going to make a, make a rule for if you've been an Olympic champion, just add that. Right. Have the International Elite Committee go in if necessary. Because, you know, SUNY might show up to Classic and be like, I got a 15 on bars, obviously. <laughs> and, none, and all of this is moot. Like, that's a very, very possible right. outcome. Um, but if We're not... We're saying just in case. Just in case. Yeah. Scrawl in the margins of the rules, like, if you're SUNY, it's fine. This is why we love <laughs> the it. International Elite Committee, like, a motion to add a rule saying, if you're SUNY, it's fine. <laughs> but on, on the topic of bars, I do want to talk about bars possibilities, getting excited about seeing SUNY compete again in Elite, and not just about the qualifying scores, which you know nothing excites me more than qualifying scores, but also... SUNY and potential bars composition. So what are you, what do you want to see? What would be your dream? 
SUNY on bars. If you're watching along with us, we're watching some dream SUNY on bars right now. So there, there's a hint in front of your eyes. I mean, my dream is for her to be happy and healthy and her kidneys to last her entire life and that to be the number one priority. And then on top of that, I would like to see all the things that she showed us in her her wild Instagram for this whole year, which has been like her uh, sights to a, what did she do? A sights to a, she did a Bahard sights wash? She to wash at one she point, did, yeah. Right. She has done uh, Nabieva to Bahard wash, as she should before, of course, Um she yeah. has just done everything you can imagine. Like, I want her to do all of our fantasy routine all connected, which she mm-hmm. can totally do. But mostly yeah. the sites to the hard wash. That's the coolest freaking mm-hmm. thing ever. But I also just want her to get her qualifying score minimum and then get right. her kidneys ready to be able to handle the training necessary to be consistent at Worlds. Yeah, just like downgrade to merely like one of the best ever on bars. Just yeah. like a, a total downgrade for SUNY that's just like Maloney to pack to just shap half. And then everyone else is like, God. And she's like, I mean, I'll downgrade to a six D score just to get my <laughs> make sure I get my qualifying score like a pe- like a peasant. Sure. <laughs> this pedestrian six point D score. Pedestrian six O like yawning my way through <laughs> a nine event com- nine skill combination. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah. So hopefully, hopefully we see that. Ho- I'm hoping no drama with the qualifying score. I don't want another like Chelsea Memel doesn't get adv- advanced to trials or whatever. All of the things that happened where we're like, this is insane, though, right? It's Chelsea Memel. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Mostly, I'm just hoping. You know what? I always hope for her health and happiness. She has wealth. That worked out great. So I'm very pleased about that. All right. Let's talk about another uh, bars ninja. Who withdrew from the competition. Right. So Shylis Jones, officially listed as Shy Jones on the start list. Now, oh. not just, so she's just shy, but I'm still saying Shylis because I think it's a pretty name and it's not going to change because yes. I can't change what I say, how I call people, Alicia Sacramoni. Um, So she withdrew. Um, it's not an injury. We think she's just taking advantage of the fact that she unlike some other athletes, is already pre-qualified because she was on the world's team last year. She doesn't have to cl- compete at Classic. She's pre-qualified to Nationals. So just, you know, taking some more time to get ready um, makes a lot of sense. If you're not, like, 100% ready to compete and you're already qualified, I think for a lot of athletes it makes sense just to, you know, take that time to be in the gym and working on routines rather than traveling to classic, making sure you have something that's hit ready at a meet. Like it could, it could be more productive to stay at the gym and work on like the amazing upgrades we've been seeing on social media. Cause she might be winning the upgrade video competition. I mean, that's the thing because like she showed her, her aerial layout layout, which is so beautiful. Mm-hmm. You, if you don't gasp something, go to the doctor. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. It's so pretty. And then on bars, she is showing her Stalter Nabieva to a hard wash. Yes, Just that's casually. right. I said Stalter yeah. Nabieva to a hard wash. Just no big deal, you guys. It's just yeah. a chill. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so, so pretty. Um, it's yeah. The the beam thing, I'm like, obviously Stalter Nabieva, amazing. But we know she's great at bars. If she gets super difficult and consistent on beam game changer because that's the one thing where we're like oh you know you're trying to put together a team maybe you don't want to put in the past maybe you don't want to put shylise up on beam in a team final because she hasn't been the most consistent there she's amazing on it of course not like a guaranteed hit so if she has huge difficulty that she can hit on beam everyone else go home and she showed, a full, she showed a full and dismount, and I think how she did yeah. at, at Worlds last year is also like a you know a feather in the cap. Mm-hmm. How she stayed on beam and so, huge progress, like the, what we're huge, seeing yes. from athletes, like that's a huge step for her to be able to go in such a pressure environment and win silver in the worlds all around. Yeah, and I think also we have to think about like the emotional part of this. Like when you're in a stable environment and there isn't like the chaos of like you know. She's taking care of her dad and her dad is like in the process of dying, you know, and like all of that. No wonder you have you're not consistent Mm -hmm. and can't focus on your gymnastics the way that you want to. So like she's had more years of stability and like, you know, so processing everything. But it like it makes a big difference. So um, I'm very excited for her. All right. We'll be right back after this. 
Some people just like to give us no strings attached money. They don't want to bother with joining Club Gym Nerd, and so they just donate. You can find our donate button for a no strings attached donation at the bottom of the club page at gymcastic.com forward slash club. Let's talk about Battle of the Jetpack Legs. <laughs> Jade versus Joss. Okay, thank you for explaining, because I was like, is this a new event? <laughs> Jessica adding new events again. She's like, men have six events. Why don't the women have six? Why don't we have Jetpack Legs? Jetpack Legs already we have it covered. <laughs> Jade and Joss. You just strap, strap some jetpacks onto your feet, do swinging rings. <laughs> women have fixed <laughs> men's gymnastics yeah you know i was gonna say swing rings i was like that's the team event we should add but anywho (laughs) okay um yeah oh so this this is gonna be good yeah the like the floor arms race that we have going on right now is really exciting because joss robertson has been upgrading like crazy this year and at the july national team camp uh, she ha- showed a 6-5 D score on floor. Jade Carey showed a 6-1, so a 4 tenth edge for Joss Robertson. Robertson also upgraded to a Chung, um, which Jade Carey didn't do at camp, but has been doing for, you know, years and years and years, and is a vault she's very comfortable with. But this is very interesting because it's kind of, I think reminiscent of what we were talking about a few years ago with Jade Carey and Michaela Skinner, where Skinner was kind Mm -hmm. of pushing Jade Carey and was there, you know, room for both of them on a team and all of that. And we're seeing Joss Robertson move into that role where she is showing equivalent or higher difficulty. And I'm very interested to compare their routines, compare their executions um, when we see them on floor together at the same competition. And I'm questioning, like, is this gonna push Jade to go back to Olympic composition? Like, with that 6-1 that we saw her doing last year, amazingly huge difficulty, obviously, in the tumbling. And she has more. Like, she was doing, yeah. at the Olympics, she was doing front to double-double. And last year, she was doing, you know, front to double-tuck. Which is hard, and a big downgrade for her. So it's kind of like, oh, is this enough? Is this gonna push Jade enough to feel like, oh, I need to bring back the big stuff because there are people challenging my floor scores. Because 14 right now is kind of the score on floor. So heading into classic, if you're watching floor, like if you're hitting 14, you're one of the best in the world on floor. But within the US, like we have a lot of people that we're seeing with who can get low 14s on floor. Like obviously Biles can get a lot higher than that. Um, Robertson has been getting low 14s. Carry. Jordan Childs last year, Shilise Jones at Nationals last year. Like, a four, 14 isn't enough in the U.S. You kind of have to push it, and that's very exciting. And um, I want to point out that uh, if you want to see the score, who has the highest scores and who D and E's, like, check out the gym internet, because Lauren has been doing that for years and years and years. And when we're talking about Joss Robertson, she just pointed out that she's in the top ranking on four events, which is a very unusual thing. Um, uh, in the four, four events, wasn't it on the four events? Bars? Oh uh, no! Uh, all, on I'm four doubting... rankings, all around I'm... <laughs> and three events, right? I, was like, I <laughs> mean, she's improving a lot on bars, but I question. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I question. So that. three, yeah. it's four of the rankings, not events. Sorry. So yeah, um, and also she showed she has a chung now, so mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. that's super exciting for her. Um, I wonder, so this is my question. Yeah. You know, remember at, was it Olympic trials or championships, um, the Olympic year, when Jade Carey, just after practice was basically over, she was like, you know, I'm just going to bust out a triple <laughs> twisting double layout just to show I can yeah. do it. Yeah. Is Joss going to bust out something like that, but like <laughs> do it? And um, for real? I think she has the capability. For sure. It's the old Simone question of like, it's not about capability, it's about whether it makes sense. Like it's consistent enough and makes sense enough in your routine, which we talked about, you know, for years with Simone. It's probably, the when it, when it comes to tumbling, it's probably very much the same thing for Robertson, where it's like getting a lay, actually laid out consistent landing double-double layout is like a huge deal and doable for her. That I think yeah, would be much, much the better. focus rather than the upgrade. 
Wouldn't it be amazing though if we had two laid out triple doubles at the same meet? I'm not. What I'm about not saying three? Simone J. Simone Jones. could do it. Yeah, I mean, some. Oh my god. What if Simone <laughs> lays out her triple double? Oh, I'll die! Oh my god, it's so exciting. I can't even think about it. <laughs> oh my god, it would be like we had three Kenzos all in the same. Oh. God. Or three Simone Biles to use a female reference, Jessica. Well, I'm not I was turning, just... <sighs> turning the conversation to men like you sexists always do. <laughs> Come on. I mean, it's Kenzo though. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> he does full floor routines with music and dance, so he's on our team. Okay. No one's doubting that Kenzo is perfect. <laughs> uh, okay. Jordan Childs. How have we talked this no. long without talking about Jordan Childs? God, I Spencer, know, what's I wrong know. with you? Horrible, oh shameful. God. I can't uh, do, even. So, with do you. we? Th- Jordan has a new floor routine because that might be the floor. thing I'm most excited to see if she has yeah. a new floor coming into this competition. Um, but we haven't seen her compete since her college routines. Um, so, interested to see what the level, what the level is, what the progress is, and kind of just what, how she fits in to a potential team role in a world where you have, you know, Simone, Suni. Jade Carey, Shailise, like what's Jordan's role on a potential team as you're trying to put those together um, and where she stands in the floor arms race. Cause we know she can get right. the highest score on floor. Well, maybe second to Simone if Simone's hitting, but we know she's capable of that. And I think that would be um, a solid progress point accomplishment for this meet. Yeah. I think, you know, she's one like Jade who competed a full um, NCAA season and right. So she didn't verify at camp, which to me means like she's still working on her consistency and not ready. But she also, mm-hmm. you know, she's been working with Tony the Tiger. Didn't I mention this thing about Tony the Tiger and no, the cereal? What is, what is happening? How we need uh, a sugar cereal on? sponsorship. And Jordan made it happen, which I am so Frosted Flakes and Tony the Tiger, Jordan Childs together. It's very exciting for me personally. Um as a kid who could never have sugar cereal in the house. So that's all I thought about. Um, <laughs> she has bought a house, doing the right things with her money, investing. She like has been doing a lot. And so I'm like, you know, she has some things. She's enjoying <laughs> New podcast her summer. Investing with the U.S. elites. <laughs> <laughs> Take that Tony the Tiger money and buy real estate. That is the lesson. So I think, you know, she's – pre-qualified to championship she doesn't have to worry about anything she can yeah. take her time so i don't think we're gonna see her at her top right now i think we're just seeing her probably getting back um mm-hmm. but i and we know that she with sorry go, we just know what she can be consistent when she gets there now you could talk we're, no we're saying the exact same thing <laughs> we're saying these just go okay. done we were trying to say the exact same thing so it's fine <laughs> Okay, um, the Melanie over America oh. tour continues. Magic. I'm so, so excited. So I think slight controversy that she got shunted to session one. Yes. Because we're denied the experience of seeing Simone and Melanie rotate together in the same session of competition. So first of all, a, I think a faux pas that Melanie's in session one, a slight breach of gymnastics etiquette, but you know we'll get through it. Because she's going to show everyone her ex- shame, everyone with her excellence and her being like, "Oh, this is floor chore- This is beam choreography. This is how you're supposed I, to move." I Did mean, you know? I think that the thing about her being—I mean, session one is the Melanie session, and session two is the Simone <laughs> session and Suni session. Yeah. So that's—I'm very excited, but I can see like it, it, the elite committee is allowing her and Paloma as well to compete um, here, even though they don't represent the United States. However, it was too much to ask to have them share TV <laughs> time with the, the the Olympic and world team members. Like, that was too much. Like, it was a step too far. Like, we, we have to ease them in to this whole idea of international superstars. Of there being people from other countries who aren't the, the enemy. It's yes. tough. It's tough. Oh, so. it's going to be. I'm very interested to see how the, what the NBC coverage of that first session is like. Oh, they're not. Do you think they'll? Like, do I they mean, understand they that it's the Melanie show? It's like, they understand that it's the Melanie show, right? They want people to watch, right? So it should be. <laughs> I mean, is USAG yeah. going to be a? I mean, they want USAG wants eyes on their advertising YouTube, so they're going to put Melanie's videos up. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
But anyway. Um, my question is, are we going to see the all around? Because French National, she did bars and beam. American Classic, she did bars and beam. Is she going to put back vault and floor for this meet? Or is it just like, I'm still getting back into it? Either except. Yeah, it's fine. I don't think she's talked a lot about her knee and how like she just has to train differently. And I think she'll wait until she really has to do it. So, yeah. Speaking of which, you can watch uh, podium training is going to be on the USAG YouTube. So you can Correct. watch along and then we'll talk about it afterwards. And then on... we're all joining here to talk about what happened. Right. As a family. Okay. As a family to get together and hash it out and be, have a Thanksgiving dinner about Simone's beam composition. Obviously. Yes. That's what you do, right? Oh, the composition notes. Please let everybody have their <laughs> – have gotten the notes, you guys. So let's not have a repeat of past years. Okay. Other major storylines you're looking at. Who are you watching? Yeah. I have my eyes on finding a beamer. Mm. Because when you we were having this conversation, I think on behind the scenes about because we can't help but put together Olympic teams. Maybe it was last episode where we just can't help but like, you know, spend eight hours putting together potential US Olympic teams just based on nothing. Um there is room for someone to be just like, I am a beam star and I'm making the team because of that. And I'm also, you know, have all the events. So I'm looking at Sky Blakely's beam. She was on the world's team last year, um, largely for her beam routine. And she scored very well on the three events she showed at the July camp. I'm very interested to see how she is ranking. Like she was kind of close to Simone on some events. Um, very interested to see how she's doing there. And Tiana Sumanasekara who has been very strong on beam as a junior. She's a senior now. She's one of the top scoring beamers for the U.S. this year. I want to see, especially with Connor McLean not competing at this meet, I want to see if there's someone who is jumping up there on beam to be like, it beam is Simone and Suni and me. There's still room for someone to be like, it's and me. And so I want to see who that is. We also were still, we talked about Suni needing a qualifying score. Kayla DiCello is in the same boat. Yes. So she also, she competed at Nationals last year. Um, she did well. She still um, needs to compete at a meet this year to get the qualifying score. She competed at American Classic, didn't get the two-event qualifying score. So, you know, it's Kayla DiCello. 50.5 all around is not a thing for her. That's not a challenge, but it's something to keep an eye on. She still needs a score. And we haven't talked about Zoe Miller yet. Right. And the thing with Zoe Miller is we always talk about her bars and how amazing her bars are. And her, mar mm -hmm. her bars are legit up there ranking in the world with the best bars. But the thing is, we just don't think you're going to be able to make it with one event. Like, well, I just don't. I, you, I, I think, let's separate the pronouns there. I all think right. you're. You more... never thought you could make it with one event, Spencer. <laughs> so how dare you? If uh, you're part of the, I am on record. If you're part of the highest scoring team with your one event, then I'm good. Yes. And I think there's still a possibility that she could be part of the highest scoring team with her, with her one event. So I would be in favor of it. Okay. I think it depends on what your all around score is. Like if you're, I, I think it will depend with the, with the way things have been going with USAG and how all around heavy. Right. The selection has been. Yeah, I do think. Oh, that's right. I'm not good. basing this on her. I'm basing this right. on. That, that they have been so worried about looking like they're um, they are by uh, unbiased that they are so just unbiased going, that they're super biased that they're totally <laughs> biased. The, that's the Olympic highest scoring team. Leave them at home. We're not going to do that. You earn these <laughs> scores. No, we don't care. No. Yeah. No. That's the problem. So yeah, but I'm excited to watch her bars. Don't yeah. miss her bars, you guys. Watch her bars. It's very uh -huh. important. I know. I want to wait. Now we have to wait until nationals to see Zoe Miller and Shailise doing bars in the same oh, meet. Oh my god! I hope they go back. Can to we back do petition to nationals just to have Sh make sure we have Shailise and the world champions gymnasts in the same rotation group, just so that we have those bars like maybe back to back? Just putting that out there. That would be great. I'm sure they're not going to do that, but I would love that. Let's do it. <laughs> Is there are too many be... world champions gymnasts. They'll just all have their own rotation group, probably. Yeah. Uh, so Leanne, we haven't talked about Leanne Wong. So mm. now Florida's compete. Also, one of the gymnasts competed a full school year, and and I'm making a point of school year for Leanne Wong because I think she said she wants to be a doctor. So that's a real school year, um, going to school and competing NCAA season. Um, and she is now having 
I, I think she's pretty much running her own gymnastics career, but she decided not to go back to Gage like she did last year. And she's training with her Florida coaches for the elite season, mm. which is a different and might have to do with like summer school and stuff too. So, um, but that's a big change for her. And I'm interested to see how it goes. You know, she always has all, all the skills, all the grace, all the consistency. Mm-hmm. It's, and all the ribbons. She, all the bows. The bows, so sorry, the bows. Uh, God, the I bows. almost said I said ribbons. I said ribbons, and I should have said bows. How many generations? Oh I want her to sell. She said she sold like ten thousand of them or something, or ten million. I don't even know. It's a bow empire. It's amazing, and I'm so glad she's making all the money. But you guys, how many generations until we get rid of this thought? I can't handle it. Like, it, I just, you guys, it, uh, kids, do whatever you want. It's fine. It's not. It's I. <laughs> God, I hate the bows so much. I hate the bows. They're so infantile. Jessica's What's going to be crazy rules. is when when she outgrows this as an adult, but still has to wear them because of the bow empire. Like this, this is, is my thing. fear yeah. for her. Yeah, um, Jessica, if you were Donatella Saki, if you were head of the women's technical committee, there would be so many rules like mohawks or nothing. <laughs> Item one: <laughs> We're getting rid of these dumb leotard rules. Wear whatever you want, but one: no ribbons. Yeah. mohawks or nothing shave your, everyone shave your hat <laughs> yeah oh uh, i mean it would just be a sinead o'connor tribute meet and mm. everyone shave yeah. their head um yeah it would be bonus points if you spray paint your hair a color just for the meat sure, but anyway sure yeah. i also leanne make all your money it's it's great um also we need to talk about some routines that you better watch or you're dead to us starting with. so not to get dramatic about it just <laughs> Yeah, just saying. It's, it's, it's chill. It's fine, but you you are dead to us if you don't watch them. So what do you have? What do you? Who are your? Who are your people? Nola Matthews floor. Nola there Matthews floor. She's very good on bars too. But floor, she is an artist, an artist on the floor. Always has been. Continues to be Nola Matthews on floor. Also, her teammate, junior teammate, who's not Paris eligible, Tyler Turner. Um. She has every single social justice leotard that you ever wanted when you were growing up. If you were me, she <laughs> she, she has like a freeish Juneteenth uh, leotard, the Black Lives Matter leotard. Like, ah, oh, they're raising her right. Um, yeah. So anyway, she also like the Airborne Kids have an amazing choreographer. Their routines are another level so tyler turner nola matthews who is your uh, bars you better watch or you're dead to us person because i know you have them um, don't act like it's just me spencer i know okay well you took nola i'm going with miley lou who got that 14 5 on bars at american classic which still ranks as the third best bar score in the year in the u.s and zoe miller and then it's sky blakely and then it's miley lou and then it's simone So she has an amazing scoring potential. So that's the one to keep an eye on. People aren't talking about her. You know, we'll see if she makes the TV cut, the TV edit. But otherwise, it's one, you know, seek it out on YouTube. It's a super impressive routine. Very difficult. Very well executed. Um, That's one one to keep an eye on, certainly. Are there, so you know how I have. Um, I have established that I no longer care about juniors, um, but are there juniors that you, other juniors besides Tyler Turner that you are obsessed with that you're like, when you watch the junior session, make sure. Jayla Hang, Simone Rose, mm. Hesley Rivera, because this is the year they are Paris eligible. So this is the year that I feel like in the, in history, it is the year that you see, Oh, that one's going to make the team or that one. Everybody needs to look out for. This is the year. So I'm very excited to see how they're doing. If I see a Lori Hernandez or a Simone Biles in the mm. the juniors, a classic. That's what I'm excited for. But that that's who I would definitely. Those are the ones that I'm keeping my eye on. All right. So um, we have um, an exciting week coming up for you with Big your li- live show classic, tickets. You guys. It's classic. classic. It's starting. Elite season is here. Live show tickets are on sale now. You have three episodes this week. Three extra episodes starting on uh, whatever day podium training is. Friday, Friday, Friday. August 4th. <laughs> Friday, then two 
behind the scenes after the women compete session one, the Melanie session, session two, the Simone and Suni session. Um, and remember the way that it works with the behind the scenes is the first 10, 15 minutes are for everybody. And then we talk more for about 45 minutes for our club members, car club members are the ones that fund these trips and pay for us to do this job year round. So we do extra for you guys. So make sure if you want to listen to the whole thing that you're signed up on club gym nerd, that's um, gymcastic.com. Join the club tab. Uh, and if you want the discount on the live show tickets too, sign up now because the discount goes away on Friday for live show. So you guys, I'm so excited to watch. Can't wait to do the extra podcast right after and talk with everybody about it. Um, thank you so much for Club Gym Nerd members. You guys are why we can afford to go to these on these trips and cover things live. And um, until Friday, our first behind the scenes live from Classic. Yeah. Remember to Gymnastics Christmas, a.k.a. Classic Podium Training. Take off on gay, split on rights, and we'll see you on Fridays for Behind the Scenes from Classic. Thanks for listening. This show is created, executive produced, produced, edited, audio engineered, and published by me, Jessica Oburn. Managing editor in charge of show notes, podcast content, and wrangling over enthusiasm is Spencer Barnes. Our news editor is Uncle Tim of gymnastics-history.com. And customer service IT, Gymternet News, and additional production services are provided by Steve Cooper, a.k.a. Fact Check.